My people, welcome to another great episode of You and I Talk Show with your favorite host, Louise Wacho. Today, oh la la, we're about to laugh again. San Aung is here. Stay tuned. You and I, you and I, you and I talk. You and I, you and I, you and I talk. You and I, you and I, you and I talk. You and I, you and I, you and I talk. You and I, you and I, you and I talk. You and I, you and I, you and I talk. You and I, you and I, you and I talk. You and I, you and I, you and I talk. Louise Wachu Imana and Wachu Productions. Hey guys, my name is San, San Ong. Uh, that is obviously not like an English name, and my parents don't have English names either. But check this out, guys. My parents, their names are English words. Yeah, yeah. Like my dad, his name is Win. You know, like victory, or success, or win, yeah. Yeah, pretty good. And my mom, her name is Than, T-H-A-N, which is like, uh, it's a word. It's a word. Uh, it's a conjunction. That's the glue that keeps the English language together. There's no shame in it. But like I thought about it like a lot, and I'm pretty sure if I ever have like a kid, you know, like a, like a child, you know, like a baby. If I ever have a baby, regardless of the gender, boy or girl, I would name that baby Win. And I know it's not fair to my mom, but Win is obviously a better name. Win means something cool. I love my dad more than my mom. Yeah. I got a favorite parent. I got a favorite parent, but I'm pretty sure it all evens out. Like, I'm pretty sure parents have favorite kids because I know for a fact, for a fact, that I am not my mom's favorite son. Even though, I'm her only child. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like the first person in my family to graduate university in seven years, which uh, it took my parents four between them. I, I remember the most boring class I ever had. It was a uh, philosophy of statistics. I had to go on to every class, every day, every week, every month. But one day, we broke for lunch, and I looked to my side, and what I saw blew my mind, because what I saw was a girl. But this girl was eating a sandwich, but this sandwich had like a slice of bread on the bottom and a slice of bread on the top, but in the middle. Like, in the middle, between these two slices of bread was another slice of bread. <laughs> she was eating a bread sandwich, guys. And I knew she was eating a bread sandwich because the middle slice had the crust cut off. <laughs> Otherwise, she would have just been eating a stack of bread. I, I didn't do or say anything. Because, you know, what else was there to do or say? I was sitting right next to a monster. <laughs> but, like, in hindsight, like, what I should have done was, like, what I should have done was, I should have just saddled up right next to her and just slapped the bread witch out of her hands. Just so I could see if she was really that boring or if she at least had, like, if she at least had, like, some butter or some mayonnaise. Can you guys believe that that's the punchline to that joke? Uh, I can't believe it's not better. Okay. Ah, thank you for being here, San. We're going to take a little short break, my people, and then keep this going, interview San, and find out about that bread and his parents. <laughs> You and I talk show with Louise Wachu. We love you, the authors, the musicians, the comedians, the entrepreneurs, and all other talented and inspiring people. Please contact info at wachu.com to be a guest on the show. Welcome back, my people. San, you are so funny. Thank you. Thank you, Louise. <laughs> 
I saw you, I first met you at a huge show at the Rio in Vancouver, people who know. Oh, yeah. and, and, and then, let's start by talking about how you were so fat back then. Oh, okay, <laughs> all right. Yes, okay. Yeah, okay. What happened? I, I lost a whole bunch of weight. Uh, what, what is this? Like, what, what happened? Is it funny? I mean, I, I didn't know that comedy is exercise. Oh, well, you know, going up every night, like, uh, you're so stressed out on stage, you start sweating a lot. Uh -huh. so. <laughs> but, like, I lost most of my weight through, you know, gym and exercise. Really? Yeah. You actually went to the gym and exercised? Uh, for a bit. <laughs> for a bit. <laughs> I, mean, it's a, I mean, you look great, though. I mean, uh, I, I, I like, uh, I like the, the new skinny you. Did you change any... Uh, Eating habits? Uh, well, uh, okay. I cut off bread and rice, except when I'm eating pizza. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nice. I can't quit pizza. Nice. Yeah. So where, where is your name from? San Ong. San Ong? It's a, it's a Burmese name. Mm -hmm. Do you know Burma? Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. people, also, it's also a name uh, called Myanmar, mm -hmm, Myanmar. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah. So your parents fled, you know, because I, I know a little bit the history. Yeah. Did, did your parents flee from uh, from that? Yeah, they were actually. Uh, they were. We were all refugees when we came here. Uh -huh. uh, my parents were uh, rebel fighters in the jungle, the Burma. And then I was born, and they were like, we shouldn't raise a child in a war zone. <laughs> So they, they just came to Canada. Wow. Yeah. I mean, how, uh, how amazing. How, how young were you when they brought you? I was five. Uh -huh. And um, like I used to know, like, because we spent a lot of time in Thailand, mm -hmm. in the refugee camps. And I used to know Thai, but like since I came here, I just forgot everything. Wow. Yeah. So your parents were like, we're not going to have a rebel kid. No, no, no. <laughs> No guns for him. No guns for him. Yeah. But, and then you come to Canada, though. Isn't becoming a comedian a little bit rebelish? Yeah. It's, um, my parents aren't the happiest about me being a stand-up. But, uh, yeah, like, I really do admire my parents. And, like, I, being a comedian is kind of being, like, a rebel. That's uh -huh. fine by me. Yeah. Like following in their footsteps. Yeah. You, yeah. Can, you can throw that at them. <laughs> yeah. You know, whenever they say yeah. you're a comedian. It's like, I'm trying to be like you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. At peace. A at peaceful peace. rebel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, university. Oh, yeah. What were you taking at university? I was, uh, I, I started off as a psychology student, but mm -hmm. then I finished my degree uh, as a communications major. Nice. Yeah. So maybe this is why you're a good comedian, because you understand the psychology of us people who are trying to laugh. Yeah. And then on top of that, you do also communications. Yeah. So psychology. So a little did, bit, yeah. Did you mix it up in the comedy? Um, yeah, like, when I first started writing, like, uh, I drew a lot of inspiration from the material, like, I read in school, so a lot of my earlier jokes are based off of things I read in textbooks, psychology textbooks, uh, but, yeah, like, I'm using my degree. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I'm using my degree. <laughs> nice. Sort of. Yeah, nice. So, I heard that you started off as improv. Oh, Yeah. 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 I did improv for like six years before I started doing stand-up. I started improv in high school, and then I continued doing that in uh, university, where I became the president of the SFU Improv Club. Nice, nice. Yeah. So how is improv versus comedy, and which one, you know, which one do you like? <laughs> okay, uh, they're very different, just because in like stand-up, you're, uh, you're alone on stage, whereas with improv, you're... Uh, you're up there with a team. It's like they're complete opposites just because, you know, improv is unscripted, whereas stand-up is a bit more scripted. Mm -hmm. Like, depending on the comic, it could be very, very scripted. Mm -hmm. Or some comics are like, they're kind of like improvisers where they can just go up without an idea and they'll make the show funny. But... Uh, I like I prefer stand up more just because when I'm up there alone and everyone laughs, it's all be, it's because of me. Yeah, 
Yeah. Like I don't like to share. <laughs> That's why I like stand up more. The credit goes all to you, all you to know. Me, yeah. yeah. And you're the one who's writing and it's because of your idea. Another thing that you have that makes you so funny is your attitude oh. and, and the way you talk, right? Yeah. So like I'm wondering, is is what is, what is that? Did you have to is this your natural way or did you have to develop it? This is me naturally. <laughs> I, I don't know, like, people always talk about the way I speak, uh -huh. but, like, I just don't know, like, this is just how I speak. Yeah. People have been, like, commenting on it since high school. Just, yeah. I guess maybe uh, I started talking this way when I hit puberty. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's hormones. Yeah. It's, it's all natural. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, because some people, when they're trying to be cool, yeah. they speak like how you speak naturally. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, yeah, I guess. <laughs> so it's very interesting. Yeah. This is how you speak. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, and it's not a character, you know. It's not, well, I mean, I try and, like, be a bit more uh, heightened when I'm on stage, but, like, yeah, this is how I speak. I, I'm not trying to do anything. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then, so we're going to take a short break. Okay. Are you a laid back person in real life? No, I'm very laid back. Okay, so. I'm too laid back. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. comedy is your kind of uh, profession. Yeah. You're in the right profession. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> All right, my people, let's take a short break and come back and keep going. You and I talk show with Louise Uachu. We love you, the authors, the musicians, the comedians, the entrepreneurs, and all other talented and inspiring people. Please contact info at uachu.com to be a guest on the show. We're back, my people, with San Aung. What does your name mean? I know this name may have a meaning. Because, you know, like you joke about your parents' name, yeah. uh, but what is like the meaning behind it? Oh, okay. Uh, well, like, I was named after a famous Burmese political figure, uh, Aung San Suu Kyi. Wow. Yeah. But she's a girl. Oh, it's, uh, yeah, <laughs> but, like, names in uh, Burma are kind of unisex. Like, oh. She was named after her father, who has mm -hmm, the same name as her, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I was named after her, so... Technically, I have a guy's name. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good point to know, because I didn't even know that she was named after her father. Yeah. So what does the name mean? Oh, it, I, don't, I, don't, I, I can't tell you. It's <laughs> like um, in Bur Burmese, there's like just a specific vocabulary mm -hmm. of like little words that people use just to make names. Mm -hmm. So like there's some names that you can pick uh, depending on like what day you were born. So I think I was born on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. So I got San mm -hmm. Ong, mm -hmm. which is like two Sunday names. Oh, yeah. so the name itself says that you were born on a Sunday. Yeah, it can like mean a lot of things, mm -hmm. but it's um, yeah, it's it doesn't mean anything cool right now. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I see. And then they reversed. So hers is Aung San. Yeah. Yours is San Aung. Is is the way that it's reversed? Uh, does it matter? Does it make? Does oh, it uh, I like it got reversed when I came to Canada. Okay. Like things got messed up. Like my like in Burma, we only have like one name. We don't have family names. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So my like when I was born, I was named Aung San Tun. But like then we immigrated here and then like the paperwork got messed up, so it's San Ong right now. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I see. Very interesting. And what is this about you living in the ghetto? Oh, uh, living in the ghetto? <laughs> it's just something I say sometimes. I live in Surrey. Uh -huh. Which oh, is a, okay, 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 okay. Which is a very far track. I only like I say that sometimes because I've lived in Surrey the, the whole time I've done stand up. Mm -hmm. So it, that just means a lot of travel time. Like I spend most of my comedy work hours on the sky train. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just thinking. Just yeah, I coming. see. So people in Vancouver think Surrey is the ghetto, eh? Yeah, I people think that, but like it's actually it's <laughs> a lot nicer. Like I, I live in a nice area. Huh? Like, they should travel a little food. bit more and yeah. see the couple of ghettos out there in, in some other countries. Yeah. <laughs> and so. then call Surrey the ghetto. I think it's nice. My parents think uh it's a lot. It's the nicest place they've lived in, <laughs> comparatively. Yeah. So have they lived uh, all their life? Then uh, how many years have they been in Canada? Oh, since they've last, last they've lived in Canada like for about twenty years now. Mm -hmm, before mm -hmm. that, they were in Burma. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad did some traveling around before that. Nice. Yeah. Have you ever been back? Yeah, once when I was ten. It was it was very hot. Uh huh. 
Um, uh, was, we went for about a couple of weeks um, in the like in the in the dry season. So, mm -hmm. like I just wasn't used to it. I'm used to Vancouver cold. Okay, so your body has been Canadianized. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> You I can't remember, take yeah. the heat anymore. Uh, yeah, I can't. Like I remember, like we were going to a like a big Buddhist temple, and like it was made out of stone, and like the sun was shining, and we couldn't wear any shoes, so like it, like it was just a uh, stone floor, just baking in the sun, and I could, like I was I was pretty much running my way through it. <laughs> but every all the locals like they were just strolling around like it was nothing. They were used to the heat. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you can invite them for the winter. See how they yeah. survive that one. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be the one who's cool. Yeah, you'll be the one who's like ha ha ha. Uh, yeah. <laughs> nice. So um, it's uh, it's very tough to come from uh, a place like that. Do you make jokes about let's say your you know, your parents' country yeah. and, and their experience. And, and, and do you find uh, any humor yeah. in that? I'm starting to now recently, actually. Um, when I first started writing jokes, I wanted to just, like, stay away from that just because I wanted to get better as a joke writer, just writing about, like, you, the usual stuff, like, you know, school, work, and, like, dating before I try to like talk about where I come from, just so that when I did, I had a, a better set of tools to work with. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so how do they react when you, you know, you talk about, you know, their country? I mean, are they sensitive to this? They don't know, well, like, oh, yeah, I've, yeah, yeah. they've never heard any of my jokes. Okay. <laughs> so, so uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you, you're safe uh, yeah. Uh, until they don't know. Until they see this show. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> They're definitely going to see this. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even think I would have done a different joke. If, yeah. Yeah, but is it, uh, is it still dangerous? Um, can you make fun of it and then still travel there, or would you be in danger next time you travel there if you make bad jokes about if it? I, it's only, from what the reading I've done, I think it's only dangerous if you... Uh, make jokes about like the situation there in Burma mm -hmm. and in the language because mm -hmm. there are like I've read up on like a lot of like very brave like Burmese comics who will go to jail because of the jokes they write mm -hmm. but I'm here and I'm safe okay yeah so as long as you make your jokes in English yeah in English <laughs> number one yeah and not in Burma yeah, <laughs> yeah. Nice. Okay, that's very funny. Because uh, you know, you'd be like, okay, they're not understanding it. Yeah, yeah, pretty much, pretty much. <laughs> or, or even if they understand it, you'd be like, that's not what I try to say. Yeah. Like, <laughs> then you know, you can get away a little bit with yeah. it. Oh, I was nice. being sarcastic. Yeah, you know, I know yeah, what's yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nice. Okay, we'll take a short break and come back and keep talking. All more. right. Nice. Cool. You and I talk show with Louise Uachu. We love you, the authors, the musicians, the comedians, the entrepreneurs, and all other talented and inspiring people. Please contact info at uwachu.com to be a guest on the show. Welcome back, my people. We're talking to San Ang all the way from Burma. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, um, I've never actually met anybody from uh, Burma, you yeah. know? I mean, um, people see Asian people and we're like, oh, Asians. Yeah, <laughs> it's a big place. Yeah. yeah, like the idea of knowing or making a difference. By the way, do Asians know between Asians who is from where? Uh, well, we're better at telling. I mean, it's not 100%, but yeah. I think Asians are better at telling which Asians are from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, Africans, a lot of people always say, oh, Africans, right? Yeah. But between Africans, we know who's from which country. Yeah. No. <laughs> we can just look and be like, oh, they're from Sudan. Yeah, that's the same thing with Asians. Yeah. Uh -huh. So uh, you know. I know, like, uh, whenever I'm looking, I can make a pretty good guess, and I will more often than not be right about that. Oh, nice. Yeah. Which one's uh, easier to spot out? <laughs> uh, okay. Um, I'm just going, uh, it would be Koreans just because they have a, a very distinct sense of fashion. Mm -hmm. So if I see, a, like, a Korean person, and if they're dressed very fashionably, uh, I, like, I will make a guess. Uh, like, I will just say Korean. Uh, and most of the time I'll be right. Sometimes it's Japanese. Nice. Yeah. So the fashionable people, those <laughs> are the Koreans and the Japanese. Well, I mean, 
I mean, I th other other people are fashionable. Yeah, as well. yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone's fashionable. Okay, the, the, the Chinese. Chinese. They uh, make the clothes. I mean, yeah. all the clothes are made in China. Yeah. Now. Yeah. But like you know, Chinese people like it's, there's China, there's Hong Kong, there's Taiwan. So it depends. Like it's the big area as well. Mm -hmm. Different cities are more fashionable than others. Nice. Yeah. Do you still speak your language? Do the parents speak it? If you go home, do they speak it with you? Uh, I speak it with them, yeah, but my vocabulary is <laughs> very small, uh -huh. uh, and my pronunciation, I've been told, is very bad. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but like not not so well. Nice. Yeah. So where do you see yourself uh, in a few years? What do you hope um, from comedy, and where do you see your comedy really going? Uh, well, like the like most comics in Vancouver, like the big goal would be to like move to Toronto, just because. Vancouver is a great city. Vancouver is like it's the second best city in Canada for stand-up comedians, especially new ones. But like Toronto is just bigger and has more audiences and more opportunities. So in the next couple of years, I'd like to make a move uh, because, like I said, like Vancouver is a great city to gr start and grow as a comedian. But like you can't stay there like your whole career. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Let's not announce it to your parents yet. Oh, Do they um, know that you're moving out of Vancouver yet? Uh, not yet. Hey, 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 mom. Hey, dad. Now they'll find out. And eventually, is the dream to go to Montreal, the Montreal... Uh, just for Laughs? Uh, just for Laughs Festival. Oh, that's everyone's dream. Yeah, like, I yeah. Just, um, yeah, like, it's everyone's dream, but, like, I can't just... Um, that's in the back of my head, but I try not to focus on it. I just want to like focus on what's in front of me right now, yes. just so I can eventually make my way to Montreal. Wow. Yeah. Well, you're so funny, and thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Any last words that you want to tell our audience before we leave? Where can they find you? Are you performing? Do you have any New Year special, Christmas uh, special? Uh, okay. Um, right now. Uh, I'm gonna be record like in the next couple days. I'm gonna be recording a stand-up EP, like an album. So keep be on the lookout for that. I also run uh, a weekly stand-up open mic at the Blarney Stone. Yes. Yeah, it's late night. Starts at ten. It's it's, uh, it's not for the faint of heart. <laughs> yeah. It's for grown-ups. It's for grown-ups. Yes. It's for grown-ups uh -huh. who uh, like comedy and like to stay up all late. All right. Yeah. Okay, my people. So if you heard from San Aung, check him out in Vancouver. Coming soon to Toronto. Coming soon to Montreal. Going international. He has such a great personality. Like I can see a TV show revolving <laughs> around you, being so cool, and everybody's going in chaos all around you, and you're so cool. So thank you so much for thank being here, and thank you, my people, for tuning in every week. Have a great weekend. All right. All right.